when I got here this morning, there was a list of announcements that weren't in the white insert left by our secretaries. New adult Sunday school class, 9.15 a.m., back in the hall, back here behind me, behind us. Uh, we're studying uh, Luke and the, uh, the book of Acts, and we'll be on chapter 2, Pentecost Sunday, uh, next week. Don't forget, if you're an elder, uh, the session meets tonight uh, in committees. Um, if you have an update for the prayer list, please let uh, Ann, Beth, Kelly, or Reverend Skelly, and whoever wrote the note had in parentheses, myself, or me, uh, if you have any updates for the prayer list. Um, so please uh, do that. You'll notice on the purple paper, some paragraphs about our stewardship season, which begins next Sunday. Uh, and we're going to begin uh, next Sunday in our stewardship season by reading the book called Stone Soup uh, with our children. And so I need everybody here to try to remember to bring a can of food. Now, it can be a uh, soup can or a vegetable can or canned meat, but please remember uh, to bring a can with you next week. That will be part of the children's message. And just keep it with you in the pew. Then also we have our prayer list. Uh, if you look uh, down under, uh, on the inside under keeping in touch, uh, this is the little section I use each week to uh, to let you know what's going on with uh, me, and uh, uh, maybe it relates to uh, if I'll be out of town, or it might relate to um, what's coming up in the schedule. During our stewardship season, just so you know, uh, during our worship, we are going to move the doxology uh, to right after the prayer of uh, uh, confession and the assurance of pardon, which is a more usual place for it. Uh, and then we'll be singing um, the first verse of the, the hymn, We Give Thee But Thine Own. Now somebody said, we don't know that here. Um, you think we do. We give thee but thine own. Yeah, uh, yeah, we know that, okay. Because uh, for, for 10 years we sang it every Sunday after the offering, so I, it's one of those ones that you, you know by heart or I know by heart, and you might get to know that too. So during our stewardship time, we're going to make that switch, uh, and then following that, we'll move back um, to the familiar order uh, that we have here. And uh, as always, I, I put in the, put in the um, keeping in touch my cell number, uh, which you note is a... Uh, Nashville, Tennessee number. If you that number pops up on your cell phone, it's not the guy that's selling you car warranty extensions. It's me. So don't click me off. Uh, and we have some other announcements. Beth? Good morning. I just had a few youth announcements. Um, there is like a October calendar because there's lots of events going on for the youth. And it's on the table outside the library if you want to pick one up. Because I did not get them to our secretary. So they're not in the bulletin. But I will next week. However, I just wanted to highlight so you can plan ahead that our um, Bible studies for youth group are on the 16th. Um, we already we had one last week, 16th, so next Sunday evening we'll have a Bible study. On the 23rd, we'll be going to the Renaissance Festival. And then on the 30th is the annual corn maze that um, everyone's invited to. And that's in the evening, and that's on the um, 
um, at on Preble County Line Road. Um, more information to come, but they have a big corn maze there, and that's in the evening. So I just wanted to highlight those things. It's a bunch of logo stuff going on, but you already have that information. And one other announcement from me on the purple paper. Uh, please note that we, after church next Sunday, uh, we're going to have an event back down in the Fellowship Hall called Croctoberfest. And we're looking for sign-up sheet. We, well, the sign-up sheet's over here. We're looking for people to sign up on the sheet uh, to bring soup or stew, uh, and uh, that'll be part of our opening of our stew, stewardship season. If you look on the purple sheet, you see stew is in capital letters. Very clever. Interim pastors are clever like that. For what? Oh, okay. When we have one announcement here. Yeah. Um, those of you who know Cheryl and Danny Mann, um, Cheryl has gone through so much chemo. She had the cancer. She was doing great. The other day she went to a Bible fair. She took the plans to the Mount um, Liberal Hospital to have it looked in sooner. And uh, they did surgery this week for the skin. They're doing surgery for the skin. So if you could see Cheryl. For Cheryl and um, Danny Mann, and uh, for all the people whom we name on our list, um, please uh, take that uh, list with you and remember those people in your prayers, um, the, and remember those people and the programs of our church in your prayers this week. And we have another presentation from our youth. Good morning. Good morning. Almost every day people come asking for help. Some are homeless, some just need a little help until their next paycheck comes in. There are lots of reasons. The Bible tells us, Proverbs 19.7, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. Matthew 5:42 Give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. Acts 20:35 And all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way we must help the weak and remember the words of Lord Jesus how he himself said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Our blessing box is to help meet their needs in a simple way. Each month, we will collect a few items which would be helpful for the season at hand. This month, we are asking for the following items. Peanut butter crackers, Vienna sausages or canned meat, soup with the pulley tab thing, and sweatshirts. We will store the items and give, away, give them away as needed. And if we accumulate a surplus, we will take the extras to the once around shop. And where will the blessing box be? Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other announcements? Let us worship God.
awesome and wondrous God, as the clouds reflect the morning sun, as the leaves twirl and spin in a brisk breeze, as the eagle catches a draft of air and soars, Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. 364. Please be seated. God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and love and self-discipline. Please join me in saying together our prayer of confession. Walking God, our companion on the journey, keep our hearts strong for we are tempted to satisfy the immediate need and neglect the effort of need for the long haul. We have given all things the momentary and popular and given up on hope and your persistent work for good. Forgive us for our half-hearted effort and willingness to abandon trust in you. Give us faith for the long journey Give us patience when the doors seem blocked, and grant us hope in the darkest moment. For though your way may seem hidden, you are ever and you are going to resurrection. This we believe because of Jesus. Amen. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have seen the victory of our God over sin and death. In Christ, our sins are forgiven. Glory, glory, glory. Glory be to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 
I invite our boys and girls to come forward, please. And you can be seated either on the floor or in the, one of the first pews here. I've been thinking a lot lately about what I do when I'm nervous or stressed out or scared. Um, what are some things that you do if you're stressed out or nervous or scared? How do you get calm again? Yeah. Don't think about it. Yeah, that's one. That's one way. Yeah. Kind of set that aside. Well, I'm going to tell you what I do. Oh, were you raising your hand or just yeah? Try to do something that you like to do that'll take your mind off it. Yeah, that that's helpful too. Um, yeah, there's there's two things that I've been thinking of. One is, and this was related to what each of you said about not thinking about it or doing something else. I have this rock here, and actually, this rock is from a beach in North Carolina where the storm is today. And look how smooth it is and flat. Here, you can take it and pass it or pass it down. Look at how smooth that rock is. It does look like a pancake. That's exactly right. And I don't know whether any of you have had any science in school yet, but you know how you know how rain falls on this on the rocks and and wind and, and at, the, uh, at the beach, the ocean would have been working on this, making it so smooth and so, look how thin that is. It's almost like a potato chip, isn't it? Yet it's still holding together. Some things in life, when we're nervous or get stressed, we have to take a longer view and you all were talking about taking a longer view. Start something else in the meantime because you know that stress might come back again another time. So you take a longer view. And then the other thing that I brought with, with me today is this uh, hand cross that a, that a friend made for me down in Mississippi. And she said that whenever you're feeling stressed, Dr. J, you just put this in your hand and you put your fingers around here and you put your thumb right there and remember Jesus and the love that Jesus had for you and that nothing can separate you from the love of God that we have in Christ Jesus. So I want you to practice that. See if you can just do that. And it may be that someday you'll, you'll find a cross like that. Uh, there's a lot around, different ones. Some are made out of wood and, and some are made out of this is a pottery one. Um, uh, there's even one that I saw that was made out of stone. I don't know how that worked, how that was made. But that's what I try to do when, when I feel like stress is coming on. Bring it over. When I feel stress coming on or nervousness, because I keep it right on my desk. I just pick it up and hold it. And it calms me down. When you were a little child, did you have a blankie or something that calmed you down? <laughs> this, I guess, is kind of like a blankie for me, isn't it? I keep it on my desk, and I pick it up, and I remember the love of God and Jesus that God has for me. So I hope you find something that you can have Keep it close at hand that you can have that will remind you 
of the love of God and Jesus that you, it, it's for you in the times when you feel stressed or afraid or nervous about something. Let's stand, or let's gather in a circle and hold hands and repeat after me, Gracious God, we give you thanks that you share your love in Jesus with us. So bless us today and keep us strong when we are nervous and afraid. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, you are seated. Or you, or you can return to your seats. I'll share with you something that you already know, I'm sure, that every congregation has that moment after the children's worship when some people go here and some people go there and some people go there, so it, I can never figure out what it is I should say. Well, go where you need to go, where you're supposed to go. I don't ever want to say go where you want to go. Our first scripture lesson uh, this morning is from Psalm 111, and you'll recognize the first verses, uh, the one that I use as my tagline in keeping in touch. Um, listen for the word of God. Uh, praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is God's work, and God's righteousness endures forever. God has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who stand in awe of him and he is ever mindful of his covenant. God has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of God's hands are faithful and just. All God's precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. God sent redemption to the people. God commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is God's name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. God's name, God's praise endures forever.
Our second scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke in the 17th chapter at the 11th verse. It's in a section in which um, Jesus is uh, under threat, under attack. Um, and they're making their way closer to Jerusalem. And particularly in the Gospel of Luke, it seems like this threat bears more weight the closer that he gets to Jerusalem. So Luke picks up the narrative. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. He entered a village. Ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When Jesus saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked Jesus. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then Jesus turned to the Samaritan and said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. May God add a blessing to our hearing of this God's holy word, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This question is asked many times each day. You'll recognize it. It's easy. Uh, you're out somewhere and somebody comes up on you or you get to a place where conversation needs to happen and, and the person asks, how are you? How are you? The, the default reply at least from my experience, is usually, I'm fine. How are you? Kind of like the opening round of a tennis match. Serve, back over the net, then what happens? Now, there are variations of this kind of exchange, but the truth be told, many times when we respond to that question, how are you, uh, we're just being polite or offering up a, the opening round of what might may be a larger conversation. We never know. It's in a similar vein. Uh, the cashier uh, said to me recently at the checkout counter, did you find everything you were looking for? And I so wanted to quote the band U2 and say, no, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I wanted to tell her uh, that I'm considering when to retire, and I'd like to know the answer when. I wanted to share that I'm serving a, a new congregation in town, and so I want to be able to help them search out God's plan for them. All this was going through my mind. And I responded, yes. I found what I'm looking for. There's no real time in the checkout line to engage in those larger conversations, is there? I've been in checkout lines when the person in front knows the cashier and they're talking and you're standing there and praying for patience and You've all been in that situation. One of my favorite uh, authors uh, these days, he, he writes a blog called In the Meantime. Uh, on the passage for this week, he's talking about those kinds of conversations that 
sometimes happen on the spur of the moment at the checkout line or, or passing by each other uh, in the Walmart or, or meeting up with someone when you're out uh, to eat, perhaps. And he reports on, a, a, David Loos reports on a friend of his who after giving the, the uh, concept much thought um, said that every time that he's asked Hi, uh, how are you? You know, somebody says, hi, how are you? He responds, I'm grateful. What would you do if somebody responded to you that way when they came and encountered you? Hi, how are you? The other person says, I'm grateful. That's loaded, isn't it? You're wondering, what's next? What are they grateful for? Just as I've been thinking about what this man does, I've been myself thinking about, I ought to use that. I ought to say, I'm grateful, and see what happens. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. We are grateful for so many things, because uh, as We find ourselves in times of stress, like we intimated in the children's sermon, uh, or um, other things happen in life, uh, as we know from the names on the prayer list. Uh, We have Jesus, and we have God's love, and, and we know, because we've heard it in the book of Romans so many times, that there's nothing that can separate us from God's love. So, uh, coming out of this morning's Sunday school class back uh, in the back room here, um, one of the people was talking about their response, and it reminded me uh, of, a, of a hymn, and I don't think it's in our blue hymnal, but it's become one of my favorite hymns lately, um, uh, basically uh, because... Um, Enya sings it, and a few other people sing it. There's uh, Pete Seeger sings it. A fo- it's a folk kind of hymn. Uh, and it goes like this. My life flows on in endless song above earth's lamentation. That's sort of the background stress of life that we all experience. But even above that, I hear the sweet, though far off hymn that hails a new creation Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? Hi, how are you? I'm grateful. In the end, I'm grateful. Since first I learned the peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever singing, All things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing? How are you? Well, I'm grateful. Our scriptures this morning point us in that direction, growing from a larger conversation, that is. The psalmist has been engaged with God in the day-to-day of living. And the psalmist can say with, without hesitation a, a bold description of his relationship with God and his proclamation about God. It says he can stand in the midst of the congregation and make this proclamation. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. And then the Gospel of Luke in this passage of the lepers. And the ten go through the checkout line and uh, their lives are changed, but one comes back and says, I'm grateful. Says to Jesus, I'm grateful. And Jesus points to the person's faith. We we see this kind of pattern. This pattern where Jesus changes life. 
where Jesus' further response indicates the extent of the grace of God, that God's grace extends beyond what we might expect even to a Samaritan who was a hated person in that day. He was, a Samaritan was considered an enemy of the Jewish nation in that day. Called him a foreigner. We see this pattern in Scripture so many times when a place, an incident, a, a happening in our lives takes, occurs. It's there. It happens. And then for one reason or another, it becomes holy. And it becomes a holy space. It's not just a checkout line, but it's a place where we begin to meet God. I'm grateful. God's grace can be seen in life. And even though in the checkout line, the person's not expecting me to say, I still haven't found what I'm looking for, God's grace can be seen with a response like, I'm grateful. It can happen at, it can happen many places, oftentimes at church and oftentimes in other places where there's a long view, where we sum up years of experience. Uh, the other day I uh, went out to the corner of the building over here and took a couple of pictures of the cornerstone and on on one face, it says 1893, and, and on the other face, uh, it says Christ, our cornerstone, our chief cornerstone. This long view of uh, our lives and our movement from place to holy space to an understanding of God's grace this long view tells the story of God's faithfulness to the covenant. That's what the people who laid that cornerstone talked about. God's covenant with Abraham and Sarah had descendants that outnumbered the stars. The wilderness wanderings are, are talked about but not permanent. Uh, God's sons and daughters uh, will be gathered at home from the east and the west and the north and the south as we sometimes quote in our communion liturgy. Mary gives birth to Emmanuel, and in three days Jesus is raised from the dead. God comes through for us always. That's a paraphrase of Jill Duffield, who writes a weekly meditation on the scriptures for the week in the, in the, in the um, magazine, The Presbyterian Outlook. Faith allows us to be a long view kind of person. It allows us to wait for the healing hand of God to fall upon us in whatever way it will. And it allows us, like the Samaritan, to take the time to go back and to say, I'm grateful. Duffield goes on to say, faith allows us both to take the long view and to live in the present. Faith invites us to lean into the future, confident of God's promises regardless of our circumstances. Faith compels us to, to stop, to give thanks, and to sing praise and recognition of the blessings that we enjoy right now. How can I keep from singing? I'm grateful. Faith requires us to remember the gospel, our gospel, Jesus Christ, the one who conquered death and saved us. Save me. Save you. She says that the texts for this Sunday call us to take the long view and remember God's promises and God's faithfulness to those promises. 
we can rest joyfully in the knowledge or in exile or at home. In whatever circumstance we find ourselves, if there's a Republican or a Democrat in the White House, we can rest joyfully at home because we know that God's love is ours. How can I keep from singing? I'm grateful. If the doctor's report is, is what we'd hoped for or what we dreaded, the words in the cornerstone come back to us. Christ is our chief cornerstone. And nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus, who is our Lord. So this week, um, we see the story once again of the nine who go away and who uh, pick up with their lives. Uh, we don't know what their lives were like from then on. We know that certainly they must have been changed because we have an idea from our reading of Scripture of what it was like to, to be somebody who was separated or living on the margins in that society. Luke heightens this, uh, this story by putting the lepers in between. They're in between Samaria and Galilee in the wilderness. They're in the waste places. They're, they're on the outskirts. They're not involved with others. They go and they live their lives, and we don't know much about them, but we know about the one who came back, and what we know is perhaps the best lesson of all, because that one throws himself at Jesus' feet and gives praise to God, he says to Jesus, I'm grateful. Oh man, it's not hard, it's not easy to, to do that, is it? When the doctor reports come in and when you hear the political commentary of the election, it's it's not hard, it's it's awful hard to to remember that within it all there is Jesus and there is love and there is gratefulness that you and I can have in life. And I think probably over the next few weeks I'll be reaching for my little hand cross a lot. But you know, brothers and sisters, you can do it. And you can remember. And you can find your own way, whether it's a hand cross or whether it's setting something aside, or whether it's doing something that you like to do instead to, to relieve yourself, to relieve that stress that's, that's within. Whatever it might be, brothers and sisters, you can do it. God has said, I will be your God and you will be my people. And Paul writes that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And we have the example of that one leper who came back to Jesus and said, I am grateful. And as our song reminds us, through life's lamentations, how can I keep from singing? I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart because the place in which we find ourselves can be a holy space, and you and I can see within that God's grace, which reaches out to us all. Remember that. Practice that this week. And maybe if you get real feisty at the checkout line, say to the person when you get there, I'm grateful when they ask you how you are. Or... If you're really bold and they ask you, have you found what you're looking for? Say, well, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Amen.
Let us share what we believe, saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us present our tithes and our offerings to our God. Let us pray. Uh, gracious God, we uh, give you thanks for the ways in which you work in our lives. We thank you that we find a place in the world uh, and that within that place you connect us one with another and that you call to us to be your people. So it is, O oh God that we attempt and we seek through all our living to love you with heart and mind and soul and strength and to love our neighbor as ourselves. So, O oh God, bless every effort that we make. Make this place a place of praise, a holy space, living out the intentions of those who founded this congregation so long ago, that people might come to know you better and grow in faith and experience your grace in life, not just within our own lives, O oh God, but in the lives of all the people, your people, your family, the whole world over. And we make this prayer in the name of our Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please find in your hymnal uh, towards the back, number 535, Go With Us, Lord, which is uh, to a familiar tune, the Tallis Canon. Please rise.
Don't forget to uh, find the sign-up sheet for Croctoberfest next Sunday. Uh, we'll be having a, a good time and fellowship one with another. Uh, as you go your way this week, grateful for the Lord Jesus Christ who is in your life, who shares God's love with you. As you go along the way, remember the words that God gave to Moses to say to the people so long ago. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Uh, may the Lord be turning his face towards you and grant you peace now and in all the days to come. Amen.